So I was doom scrolling recently for no good reason, and I stumbled on a post from Mammoth Lighting. And this was a recent study that they wanted to share from a company in Australia that basically was saying that we might be wasting our time with some key things that we've been doing in the garden. So in this video, I'm going to break down those exact things, and we're going to see if this is actually valid in our home grow space. Stay tuned. Back we always do about this guy. So if you're new here, my name is Rob and we talk all things herb today in particular, we're going to be going over a new study or a more recent study that breaks down defoliation and spectrum tuning and how it actually may not be very beneficial for our grows. Now, this study in particular is one that may come with a little bit of controversy based on some specific details, but we'll get into that in a second. First, quick shout out to the sponsors who help make videos like this happen for free and provide some amazing discount codes. Now, the grow room's starting to feel a little bit chilly, but your plants don't have to. Enter Vivo Sun's Aeroflux Smart Grow Tent Heater. 700 watts of PTC heat delivering 30% more power than the standard heaters. Built for tents, timing, and automation. With built-in sensors, it reads the temperature and humidity in real time, adjusts heat to maintain your target VPD, and stays safe with tip-over and heat protection. Pair that with Vivo Sun's Smart Humidifier line, models like the AeroSteam H19 with Wi-Fi and external temp humidity probe, smart constant humidity control, and whisper quiet output. Whether your tent needs more moisture boost or steady baseline, this unit's got you covered. Use code CLTV at VivoSun.com or CLTV Watch on Amazon. And if you're looking for some genetics, check out Seasman. They got your back. Use discount code CLTV to save yourself a little bit and help the channel. So first, let me start off by saying uh, I don't necessarily agree with every single study that comes out. There's a lot of variables that happen in these studies that can make things a little more subjective or a little bit more inconclusive, we'll say. So for this study in particular, researchers from University of Adelaide in Australia dove deep into something that seems to be a heavy trend in commercial growth spaces in particular, and this would be spectrum tuning as well as defoliation. Now, the lead author on this was Aaron Phillips, as well as the team from Phoenix Biosciences and South Australian Research and Development Institute. The goal here was pretty simple. They wanted to see if potency and yield were affected by light spectrum tuning as well as defoliation. And for a lot of us home growers for years, spectrum tuning is something that's been more taboo. But defol or pruning defoliation, this is obviously something we all do, or majority of us do, some heavier than others. And I really feel that it's kind of just goes without saying something all home growers do. Now, if you don't do any defoliation, let me know below in the comment section why you don't and what you do instead. But for most of us, again, that's our go-to method. Now, the goal was pretty simple, to find data-driven ways to optimize canopy shape and space, increase cannabinoid yield, and cut unnecessary labor and in indoor cultivation. Now, in short, they asked, does light spectrum tuning affect yield? And does it affect quality? They also wanted to see if defoliation does anything to the quality and the yield as well. Now for this study, here's the controversial part, in my opinion. They used two cultivars, and these were both hemp cultivars. Now, similar chemistry, obviously, for the plant. However, hear me out here. One was called Black Label, the other was Mountain Strong CBD1. They used four LED setups for this. Broad white, blue, red, and white, blue, white, and red and white. Half the plants weren't defoliated, and the other half were. They used the same PPFD, 480 to 1100 and the same nutrients and the same cocoa. They measured the plant structure, flower biomass, and the cannabinoid content. Now here's where some of the info got interesting. Red and white showed the tallest plants, longest internodes. They looked healthy, but yield per canopy volume was weak. Blue and white showed compact and potent, but had the lowest biomass, so total cannabinoids dropped. Then blue, red, and white had the best overall balance between structure, potency, and the best yield per space. And then followed by broad white, which is a close second. Now, according to this study, the takeaway was essentially the full spectrum or the balanced spectrum worked the best. And this was better than blue, this was better than red. And some studies contradict that. And they say that more tuning towards red will bring out things like the thiols and will bring out more of these compounds that we're after these days and could even potentially increase the yield. However, it is really about when you utilize these techniques of spectrum tuning. And that's one thing that this study did leave out. Now for the default results or defoliation. It showed reduced plant height and flower mass overall. In the black label, the potency went up or the CBD, the CBC, the THC, but the total yield went down. In the MSD1, the results were mixed, often no benefit or even a loss potentially. So the bottom line in this study essentially said that if you, you know, are worried about more cannabinoids, this works very well for you, which most of us are. But if you're worried about more biomass, that's stupid. then defoliation may not be as good for you. And this does seem like common sense in a way. However, 
biomass isn't necessarily always the end goal. I do feel like sometimes in these studies, they're not understanding that like A buds and B buds or lower larvae stuff isn't gonna be consumed most times. Now, from what I gather, and hear me out on this, if you disagree, let me know below in the comments why, and don't be a total asshole, but let me know why. Now, it seems like focusing more on the yield will then sacrifice more of the potency, more of the cannabinoids and the stuff that a lot of us are more focused on. As we're focusing on the potency will potentially hinder our yield. Now, I know there's a happy medium and a trade off. And one thing that this study doesn't really break down at all is different types of cultivars or strains react totally different to different training methods. Also, when you go about training is going to be different as well. The first week is when they started targeting their defoliation. Some people will wait a little bit later and some will do this earlier into veg before they flip into flower. So there's a lot of variables that fall into play here. Also, a thing that wasn't mentioned is sometimes doing this defoliation can leave the plant more susceptible to diseases. That's nasty. The main reason is, is once you have an open wound and there's any sort of disease around the plant, some sort of bacteria that can get within the plant, this is when it leaves itself open to these diseases. So anytime you're doing topping or you're doing defoliation, it can happen. There's a study done on apples that showed this, not necessarily on our plant in particular. However, there is science that shows this to be true. When it boils down to it, when you train your plant and how you train your plant is gonna be the biggest impact. The light spectrum tuning, not all plants are gonna take well to this. Some are gonna do better than others. Primarily, it's when you tune these lights and when you utilize these different types of light spectrums. Now, GML breaks this down very well in a From the Stash episode that you could watch below in the description or in the comment section. But for the most part, this science is still evolving. We're still learning more about it. There is some studies that show that you can get better yields and better overall quality by spectrum tuning. And there's now studies that show otherwise. So it really just depends on how you're using this in your garden and what kind of plants you're growing. Now, what do you think? Is this just a bunch of science bullshit? Or do you think that this is something credible that we should pay attention to and maybe change the way we garden? Let me know below in the comment section. With that being said, I'm Rob. This is CLTV. Thanks for watching. And if you want to watch more videos, check this one out up here. Peace.